So, when you think about the five process groups, think about them as groups of processes that need to be carried out on any project. So you could think about them like this. First of all, you've got the initiating process group. The initiating process group is all about kicking off the project on a good footing, making sure that the project is formally authorized and recognized within the firm. And then the next group we have is planning. The planning process group is all about coming out with a plan of action that will be carried out to get the project work done. The next group of processes is executing and executing is all about carrying out that project management plan the next group of processes is monitoring and controlling and this is all about monitoring the project and if the project is going off then taking action, which we refer to as controlling, controlling the project. And then the final group of processes is called closing. Closing the project. So we have these five process groups, initiating, planning, executing, monitoring and controlling, and five, closing. Now, I'm going to give you a mnemonic to remember these five process groups because it's so important I want you to have a mnemonic to remember those. And the mnemonic is this. I prefer extra money in cash. I prefer extra money in cash. That's how you remember the five process groups. Initiating, planning, executing, monitoring and controlling and closing. So once you've got that down, that's a big step. The next step in this chapter is to talk about the knowledge areas. So we have 10 knowledge areas that we need to identify. These knowledge areas, as discussed in the DVD, the academic DVD of the Time Machine Project, these are areas of knowledge that the project manager should be aware of in order to effectively manage the project. So I'm going to draw out these areas of knowledge. So follow along. The first is integration management. And I'm just going to be referring to them as their first name, integration. I won't call it project integration management, even though that's what the PMI calls it, because that's very long. So I want to make it very fluid and easy to remember. So we're going to call the first knowledge area, knowledge area, KA for knowledge area. The first knowledge area is integration. The second knowledge area is scope management. I'm going to call it scope. This is all about scoping out the project and making sure you've identified all that needs to be done, all that needs to be implemented on the project. The third knowledge area is time, time management. And that refers to putting together a schedule, making sure that the schedule is going according to plan, and if not, carrying out certain actions to bring the schedule back in line. Now for integration management, which I failed to define for you, integration management is all about the effective coordination of the project. So you'll see why it will make more sense to, to talk about integration towards the end, because integration is all about effectively coordinating everything else that I'm going to be showing you. Okay, So that's time management, the third one. The fourth one is cost management. Cost management involves putting together a budget for the project and controlling the budget. The fifth knowledge area is quality. Quality management. Quality management is all about ensuring that the identified quality standards 
are implemented in the final deliverable. It is also about identifying any quality standards that need to be implemented in the deliverable or on the project. The sixth area is called human resource management. I'm just going to leave that as human resource. Some folks refer to that as HR. So human resource management is all about acquiring the team, developing the team, and managing the team. It's a skill to acquire good people. Developing people is also a skill. Managing those resources is also a skill. The seventh knowledge area is communications. the communications management knowledge area and this is all about ensuring that communication needs are well defined ensuring that communication is delivered in the right format when needed and to ensure that you are adjusting to the stakeholders needs as information or communication requirements change the next one number eight is risk management and risk management involves identifying risks, making sure that these risks are planned for in that you develop a risk plan of action for any of those identified risks. There's six things that really need to be done in risk management. We need to plan how to manage the risks in the first place, how extensive are we going to get in managing risks, then we identify anything that could possibly affect the project, either positively or negatively. By positively, we're talking about opportunities here. Imagine working on a project where you're working on a particular deliverable and you've got some scrap or waste from that deliverable, but through your opportunity analysis, you discover that that scrap could actually be used to bring in more revenues, maybe even more revenues than the project itself. That's a huge opportunity. That is also part of risk management. So risk management deals with identifying the risks, positive or negative, and then analyzing the risks from a qualitative standpoint, which means you assess if the risks are high, medium, or low, and maybe you even put a dollar amount or a pound amount or a euro amount, depend on the currency you're working on, on those risks. You could say, oh, that risk, because of X, Y, Z factor, that risk is worth 10 million euros. You identify the risk, but you also quantify the risk in some measurable form. And this measurable form doesn't always have to be money. It could also be man hours or effort. And then finally, we also plan risk responses. This is where we come out with a plan of action for how these risks will be effectively managed. And the last one is controlling the risk. So I've spent a bit of time talking about risk management because it's a very important area of project management that brings everything together. Because you could have a risk in how you identify scope. Perhaps your scope identification wasn't as good. Your defining scope didn't cut it. And you've got a risk in how you identified and documented the scope. You could have risks in how you developed your schedule or in how you budgeted the cost or in how you identify the standards. Maybe a huge standard, very important one you failed to observe or a huge regulation. Could be a flaw in quality. So all of these knowledge areas that I'm going to be showing you, we have risks, possible risks that could surround these knowledge areas and those risks need to be identified. Also, the next knowledge area is procurement management. Procurement management is the knowledge area that deals with the analysis of what you need to buy on the project to get the project complete or what you need to procure. This could be services from an external organization it could be widgets or sub-deliverables from some supplier. But anything that you need to buy external to your organization, we could refer to that as a procurement. And we need to plan how to 
carry out this whole process. We need to plan how we're going to purchase what we need. What do we need? Can we actually make what we need or do we have to buy it for one reason or another? An example of make or buy analysis could be you look through your organization and you see that a particular skill level is needed for a project. However, when you look at the skill set of the people in the company, you discover that they are so well versed and so skilled that using them for that particular aspect on the project could also could actually be a downside for you in that you could get the same level of skills you need outside for cheaper than you pay your employees. For example, if you pay Bob $50 an hour and you want to put him on a project to do the same work that could be procured for less outside for this particular project, maybe you could procure those services or that labor from outside and you could put Bob on some other higher priority project. So a make or buy analysis doesn't always have to be uh, about tangible uh, resources or a tangible widget or deliverable. It could be to do with skill level, skill set in the organization. Maybe there's a higher priority project and Bob needs to be on it. So get the skill that Bob has outside. Maybe it even costs the same, but the point is the make or buy analysis asks the question, what does it make sense to do? Should we make or should we buy? And then lastly, the tenth area of knowledge is what we refer to as stakeholder management. Stakeholder management. Stakeholder management involves asking the question, who is my stakeholder? Who are the stakeholders? Identify the stakeholders. That's the first step. And then after we identify our stakeholders, we plan for how they should be managed effectively. And after we do that, the next step will be to manage our stakeholders' engagement on the project. Make sure they're engaged. Make sure that any deliverables that you need from them is being provided by them. And make sure that their full attention is on the project. If they need to test a widget, they're available to test it. If they need to discuss something, they're available. And Remember, stakeholders could also be team members, senior managers in the company, but making sure that you've got their full attention as needed, when needed on a project. And also here, if you see that your stakeholders aren't as engaged, this is where you engage them. This is where you change your strategy, modify your strategy, and engage them. So those are the 10 knowledge areas of project management. Integration management, all about coordinating everything else here. Because all of these different pieces I mentioned need to be coordinated. Integration deals with that. Scope management deals with defining the scope of the project. Time management deals with developing the schedule and controlling the schedule. Cost management deals with determining the budget for the project and making sure there's no overage, making sure that the team is on top of their spend and making sure that you, the project manager, knows what's happening. If there are any changes as far as the budget, those changes or potential changes need to be escalated and discussed as appropriate with a change control board or some other sort of board on the project. Quality management deals with identifying the quality standards that need to be met and meeting them. Human resource management deals with acquiring the team, developing the team and managing the team. Communications management deals with communicating with stakeholders as needed and as planned. Risk management deals with identifying the risks and managing the risks. Procurement management deals with anything that needs to be bought on the project external to the organization. And stakeholder management deals with effectively managing stakeholders. So that is the 10 knowledge areas. Now, the reason why I was referring to this as a matrix is because all of these have intersection points with the different process groups. And I'm going to refer you to the matrix that is in your book. If you take a look at your book, The Time Machine Project, you want to take a look at one of the tables here on page 11. 
And that is really where we're going with all this on page 11. Because this is where we see the intersection points of the knowledge areas with the process groups to form the process associations between knowledge area and process group. So, if you take a look, you'd observe that we have the initiating process group, the planning process group, the executing process group, written nicely, the executing process group, I'm going to call this M and C for monitoring and controlling, and CL for closing. And that's how it looks. We've got the knowledge areas and the process groups in that table. Now if we really look at that table, we see how everything intersects. I'm going to very, very rapidly cover all the 47 for you, and I'm going to use abbreviations. And as I use these abbreviations, I would like you to look into your book to see what exactly the abbreviations mean. And I'm using abbreviations because there's so much information that needs to be discussed. This table could get very, very dense after a while and it could be a little bit tough to follow. So bear with me as we go through these 47 processes.